80% of real estate businesses, I wouldn't step foot in them because the leadership is poor. The marketing is average. The people that own the business don't even show up. They don't put anything into the people that work for them to get them to where they wanna go. A lot of small real estate agencies do fail. And the reason is the good stuff of starting your own real estate business. You can make your own ideas happen. Obviously there's more money if you do start your own business because you're not sharing so much with the agency and you're in control of what the money is spent on. Let me tell you something, you know the easiest way to become a millionaire? So you've mastered the market, but now you wanna start winning for yourself. I'm Daniel Lee, some know me as real estate's funny guy, but in the Get Keen podcast, we get down to business and explore what gets people really keen, how to get the most out of your real estate career, how to build a successful business and live the best life for yourself and your family. We'll uncover how to be hugely successful in real estate, setting you up to get keen and make the next big move in your life. All right, guys and girls, today we're going to talk about the good and the bad about starting your own real estate business. Because I know a lot of you listening here right now, you're successful agents. You're doing really well in your marketplace. And there's something deep down inside of you saying, maybe I should start my own. What would it be like to have my own business one day? Well, we're going to go into that journey because I've been there. I've done that. I used to be a high performing agent for one of the regular, you know, well-known agencies that you know in Australia. And I built up a team and then I made a decision one day to go and start my own business all on my own with a business partner, uh, but not, you know, joined with another model or something like that all on my own, figuring it all out. Right. And I want to tell you about the good and the bad of this because it wasn't all roses. All right. Yes, there's a, you know, a path that we're leading to. There's there's financial success. There's the the proud ego of having your own business and brand. But let's look behind the curtains and see what it takes. And let's talk about some of the bad stuff that you'll go through because, you know, as I said, there's a lot of sacrifice uh, behind those curtains. So first of all, why would you even consider leaving your agency in the first place? To me, it's all about value, the value that you are getting, all right? It's, it's not just about the money. It's about the value, all right? Because the agency and the agent relationship, it's a bit of a funny one. It's like a girlfriend and a boyfriend, all right? What do you do for each other that make your lives better, all right? You're an agent in an office right now listening to this, and you have a role for the office, all right? Your role is to get out there in the marketplace, to make calls, to meet people, to create relationships out there in the marketplace who are people who are doing stuff, who own property. You are to find opportunities. So you've got to have your antenna on. You've got to ask the right questions. You've got to get yourself in the living room doors uh, of people who are going to sell their property and convince them that they should sell their property with you and your agency because you're going to get them a better price than anyone else in the marketplace. You know your role. And then from there, you convert those listings into uh, you know, sales on the market. You go through the sales process to, to sell the property. You meet all these people you market yourself and you find more opportunities. And this is a rotating sort of role. You know it, you're doing it right now. And then there's the agency's role for you, okay? This is the other half of the relationship because let's remember there's commission that comes in from a sale and you split it. This isn't like a normal role in uh, lots of other businesses, okay? Uh, you split exactly the amount of money that comes into the business based on your role. Now, your role is to do everything I just mentioned. The officer's role is to provide you with a safe environment to work, which you love, which has a great culture of training, diversity, uh, you know, with uh, somewhere where you feel comfortable every day showing up, um, that provides training, that has great mentorship and leadership, that actually has a vision for you, that has a pathway for you to be the best version of yourself. They provide you with the tools you need to get out there and do your job. So uh, we're talking about technology, printing, 
uh, you know, staff to get your listings online and to process your contracts and to make brochures for you and do graphic design and perhaps videography. All of those things that the agency does is what their value is to you. And for the value that they give you, you decide to split the commission uh, in an amount. And usually that equates to in the marketplace something like anywhere from 50 to 70% generally. And you know, you both do the best for each other, okay? But here's the thing, it's all about value. And let me tell you something, if you're in an agency that is giving you everything you need, all right, they are providing you great leadership. They are giving you amazing training. They're giving you the tech. They're investing in your marketing. They're providing you with great mentorship and leadership to help you build a, a fantastic team around you to make sure that you are absolutely extracting your potential of what you can be in that agency and you're super happy, then congratulations. Starting your own business may not be for you right now. It may never be. Maybe you found your happy place, your environment you want to stay in it forever. Because I'll tell you, there are a lot of really good agencies out there. There's some fantastic owners. There's some brilliant leaders in Australian real estate. Um, and if you're working for one of them, then good for you. You know, that's hard to find. There's actually not that many really good leaders and business owners. I would say probably 80% of real estate businesses, I wouldn't step foot in them because the leadership is poor. The marketing is average. The people that own the business don't even show up. They don't put anything into the people that work for them to get them to where they want to go. All right. So if you're in one of those 80% that's doing hardly anything and you feel like you're doing everything to make the most of this journey, you're doing way more for the business than the business is doing for you, then you probably need to start looking at your life, at your situation and where you are positioned as a real estate agent and make the decision, is this the best ship for me to be on for the next five years of my life? Because I'm telling you what, five years is going to turn around. You're going to look older. I'm going to look older and we're all going to go, Hmm, should have I made a better decision five years ago? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about my story just for a second because that's exactly how I felt. Okay, I was in an agency where I was comfortable. I was doing well. Um, I had a team, but I was doing everything. Okay, yeah, the office had some admin staff and handled my contracts, but they didn't do anything to push me. They didn't add – I was never called into any meetings to say, hey – We've thought of a great idea that we should implement into your team. Hey, we're going to invest this in you. Hey, here's an extra uh, thing we're going to do to advertise the great success that your team is having. Having, um, You know, I would give ideas to the office. They would never come to fruition. Uh, I was working. I was the one that was implementing new technologies into my own business. I was doing my own recruiting for my own team, right? I had no help from my own office that I was in. So basically, I was running the whole business of and then the growth of my own business within that office. They provided something. I'm not going to say they provided nothing at all, but I looked at the value at the end of the day between this relationship, okay? What I was providing to the office and what they were providing to me. And I tell you what, when I started, it was a lot different, okay? Because when I started, I was nothing. I didn't have any contacts. I didn't have any listings. I didn't have any sales. If I turned around in week two and said, sorry, office, this place isn't for me. I'm going to go someone else. You know what they would have said? See ya. We don't need you. You're nothing, right? The office's value was up here. They had a place for me to come. They had equipment. They had, you know, staff. They had a database. And I was just nobody, right? So my value to the business was down here. The office's value was up here for me. But over time, that value completely switches, all right? You become a successful agent. Now you're bringing in all of the money. You're making all the relationships in the, in the, um, in the marketplace, but what tends to happen is as that value proposition changes, right, most offices don't up the value that they're willing to give to the agent. And it doesn't just have to be the split. It can be in support, advertising, leadership, training, helping them to become a better person. 
And if you're not getting all of those things that you need from your office, then you're not in the right office. And perhaps there may not even be another better office to go to. Maybe you don't wanna be in another office. Maybe you wanna try and go and build something on your own. Now, let's be real. If you're gonna do it on your own, it's not easy doing it on your own. It's challenging. And for those that watched my first episode, you'll know about my journey in real estate on my own. Go check it out if you haven't listened to it. Now, let's talk about the bad stuff. All right, if you do it alone, and I'm not talking about joining another model like Plum Partners, which is going to basically be in your corner and help you do everything you need to do, right? You're gonna be doing it on your own, right? So you're gonna be building your own website, creating your own brand, um, you know, uh, implementing your own technology, paying for all of the staff and the, uh, uh, the tools that you need to run your business. All right. If you do that, you're going to have to push past your limits because let me tell you, you're going to add a lot more to your plate because what you do right now, if you're a successful agent is you're already working eight to 10 hours a day. If you go and do this on your own, you're going to be adding another five to six hours to your day, all right, to be able to do the bookkeeping, the, the trust accounting, to be negotiating everything to do with your business, all of your suppliers, to do your contracts. You may have to hire staff to do that. Those staff might leave. They might get sick. They might go on holidays. You get roped back into doing their jobs, Okay, so now all of a sudden you're not just a salesperson, you're a salesperson and a business owner. And a lot of the time when you're a small business and a business owner, you become an admin person that is roped into running the business. Okay, so you got to be really careful about knowing how much extra work's going to be on your plate if you're to do this alone. Okay. Now there are some extra fixed costs. Okay. So as a salesperson in an agency, the agency takes on a lot of the fixed costs that you probably don't think about. You know, they have to provide a premises. You're going to have to find a place for yourself to work, whether that's from home or you go and get yourself a commercial office or some sort of serviced office. But let me tell you something is you don't actually need an office to begin with. Okay. I started my business and you'll know this in my journey. If you watch the first episode that I started it in an, uh, in an apartment for the first 18 months, I ran my business out of an apartment. You don't actually need it, but you do need it once you start to grow. Okay. You need it for staff more than customers. Hey guys, just quickly, if you're loving this content and you're a real estate agent that's already thinking what it might be like to have your own real estate business and brand, then check out the show notes. There'll be a link to our Plum Partners website where you can leave an inquiry and me or one of my team members will reach out. We help agents to create, run and grow their own real estate business and brand so they can earn more and set up a better future for themselves. So get keen, get in touch. Now let's get back to the episode. Other fixed costs, technology. You, pro, you, you, you need all those things. You need RP data or, or price finder. You need uh, realestate.com subscriptions. You need, uh, you know, you've got domain, you've got homely, you've got those other portals. You've got uh, DocuSign or some other signature uh, uh, program. Uh, you've got proposal, uh, digital proposal platforms. You've got email marketing. You've got uh, a whole range of different programs that we use as agents that you're going to need to take out those subscriptions for. So add add three to four thousand dollars a month, all right, as a basic, just to, you know, uh, be paying for all of the subscriptions and stuff that you're going to need. Now, if you go out on your own and do everything and you don't want to do it all yourself, like that extra five, six hours that I was talking about, I did that in the beginning, okay? Because I was worried about budgets and I was like, well, I can't afford to just go and spend 80,000 plus super, plus a splice, plus sick leave, holiday leave, all the other extra expenses that come with hiring people. I did it all myself. But if you don't wanna do it all yourself and you just wanna stay in sales, you're gonna have to hire some people. All right, so budget for maybe two employees off the bat to be working in your small real estate business to, to handle all of that extra work. You know, I've mentioned a lot of those things, but there's a lot of contract work. There's a lot of chasing up. There's organizing advertising. There's organizing your brochures. There's getting all of your advertising out there. There's all sorts of little jobs that have to be taken care of, right? And you're going to need a, a couple of staff to do that. So let's add you know, another, let's say $150,000 plus super, all right, on top, on top of that, plus a Christmas party, plus, 
you know, sick leave and holiday leave and all of that. So add another 170 to be realistic, plus your $3,000 a month in, you know, subscription costs. And then you've got your marketing costs, your agency that you might now work for, maybe they provide you an ad advertising budget. I mean, most of them don't provide much, maybe a couple of grand a year or something like that, but they, they still usually let the agents print whatever they want. You're going to need to get a printer. Those things aren't cheap. They're like, $450 a month plus all the, uh, you know, five cents a sheet. You don't realize how much it adds up. You got to pay for your phone. You got to pay for your internet connection. You got to pay for your insurance. You got to pay for everything. Like the, the costs add up, guys. It's probably 200 grand, right? It's closer to, uh, I reckon, two to 220 uh, that you're going to need just to set up your business on your own and have enough resources right? I didn't pay 220 because I did a lot of those jobs myself. But if you're not going to do them yourself, you're going to have to pay people. You're looking at two to 220, all right, to start. Then you need to go and sell because you're the only salesperson in this business. You're not making any money till you've made at least two, two to 220 to pay back everything you've just set up, okay? After that, there's, you know, whatever's left over. And the tax man's going to take a bunch of that as well, okay? So there's not as much left as you think, right? And Let's talk about the risk, right? What if it doesn't work out, all right? You've made these subscriptions for three years with these businesses. You've maybe taken out a commercial premises. You've built the website. You've spent all this money setting it up. And then either you don't like it. Perhaps you decide you want to leave. Perhaps you uh, get divorced and don't want to be in real estate anymore. I don't know what the reason is. But for some reason, you decide to shut down the business in a year or two right? You've just wasted a whole lot of money and now you're back at square one and you're probably in a worse position than you were before. So there is that risk. And you know what? A lot of small real estate agencies do fail, right? When they're on their own. And the reason is because most of the time these agents, they go out on their own and they're not prepared, prepared for the extra work. So they do the uh, same amount of hours. But what happens is is instead of doing eight to 10 hours in the sales arena, which is relationships, listing, sales, marketing, right? They do, they, they turn into a part-time real estate agent and a part-time admin person in their own business. Okay, so 12, 24 months down the track, they were doing 40 deals the year before. All of a sudden now they're doing 20, you know? And, and it's not because they've got their own brand. It's because they're not putting the same amount of effort into the role that actually brings the business in. Another thing that happens to a lot of agents when they go out on their own and they're doing it all on their own is they do just as much in the sales arena, all right? So they're still doing their 10, uh, eight to 10 hours in sales per day and then they just add on the extra five to six hours because they're not, uh, you know, they're not paying for someone to help them or they don't have enough uh, labor in their business to, to help them with all the stuff. So their 10 hour a day or eight hour a day now becomes a 13 to 15 hour day, right? And for the, that, that'll that last for the first maybe 12 months, two years. What does that do? When you, when you turn your normal role from eight to 10 hours to 13 to 15 hours, you have to make way more sacrifice, okay? What gets sacrificed when you're putting too much time into work? You sacrifice your family, your children, your partner. You sacrifice your health. You stop going to the gym because you can't make it in the evenings anymore. You've got payroll to do. You can't make it in the mornings anymore because you've got uh, four CMAs that you haven't got prepared for the day, all right? So you, you, your health gets out of whack. You don't go and see your friends anymore. You don't go to any shows. You don't, um, you know, you're not enjoying life, right? And let me tell you something, like uh, business is great um, when, when things are going well, like that, that's, that's fantastic. But if you're unbalanced, if you've got a great business and your home life sucks or your health sucks or you're, you're not having any fun, you're going to hate your business and it's going to start to deteriorate because it's going to play on your mindset. So you don't want to have that life. You want to have a balanced business that's working really well and you want to have balance in the rest of your life. All right, so let's talk about the good stuff though of starting your own real estate business because there is a lot of good things about being a business owner. To me, I know it's the best way to financial freedom, but there's a lot more to it than that, okay? So I'll take you back to when I started. Yes, it was a grind. Yes, it was hard. But five years on, it was the best decision I ever made. Okay, I'm going to tell you about some of the benefits I've got from starting my own business. All right, firstly, right, you can make your own ideas happen. 
all right? You can market your business the way you want to. How many times are you in a real estate agency, you've got an idea and they're like, nah, you can't do that. You can't make a video like that. It's against our brand. It's against this. It's against that. And it's not, it's, it's the company's brand, but that's not your brand, right? So you can market yourself. You can do things your way. That's, that's actually really, really powerful. Okay. Obviously, there's more money if you, uh, you know, if you do start your own business because you're not sharing so much with the agency. After you pay your expenses, you've got profits on the end. And if you're doing really well, all right. If you're a high performing agent making four hundred plus thousand, you can actually uh, make more money by doing it for on your own. I truly believe that. Okay. Um, and you're in control of what the money is spent on. Okay. So when you're in an agency, you split your commission. And you give it to the agency and they go and spend on whatever they want. And most agencies, most of it just goes to the owner and um, which, look, they deserve a good portion of it. But a lot of them don't reinvest in the business. They're not uh, reinvesting in, in promoting you, the team, helping you to get listings, paying for lead generation, things like that. Right. Whereas if you have your own business, the money comes in, you can pay yourself and then you decide what the money is spent on, okay? Whether it's gonna be more Facebook advertising, more Google ads, more this, more that, whatever you wanna spend it on, which is going to benefit you as a salesperson. And that just doesn't happen in the majority of real estate agencies, okay? Thirdly, you get to choose who you work with. How many people here listening to this are working in an environment where, geez, they hate some of the people in there. Some of the people are unmotivating. They bitch and whine about everyone else around them. Uh, you know, they're not getting along. They're sat next to people who are unmotivating, who, who are negative, who aren't inspiring, um, all of those things, okay? You run your own business, you choose who to work with, okay? That's massive. That's so important. So you can build your own culture by surrounding yourselves with the best people who you love. And when you love the people you work with, you want to help them. They want to help you. The sky's the limit to how far you can go with these people, okay? So you can build a sales team around yourself, not just you in sales, okay? Here's one of the biggest stressful things that stressed me out as an agent working at an agency back in the day, okay? I used to have a team, right? And I would need sales associates to join me, all right? Sales associates would help me run open homes, run buyers, make prospecting calls, get my marketing out there. There. All right, now these sales associates, they're young men and women in their 20s and they want to have a, 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 a career in real estate. So what they do is they join my team and I tell them, I'm going to make you the best salesperson or best saleswoman that you can be. All right, and they're like, yeah, that's going to be awesome. I'm going to join you. You're going to be on my team for one and a half years. I'm going to kick your ass. And they're like, all right, I'll do it. And then they're on my team for a year and a half and actually for the first three months, they're a pain in the ass, all right? Because they don't know anything. They're stuffing up all the time. I have to spend heaps of time teaching them how to do stuff. I have to make calls with them and I have to go, no, you got to do it like this. We got to do it like this. Let's try again. Let's try again. And they stuff up all the time. And, you know, uh, so they're not really that valuable for about 90 days, all right? So it's, it's, it's like definitely the first month, right? Hardly valuable at all. Get a little bit more valuable after two, two months. After about three months, they're pretty valuable. And from then on, You've got yourself a great sales associate and your team's kicking ass. And then 12 months later, that young junior goes, you know what? It's time for me to fly the coop, right? And what happens to you? Your agency goes, hey, Dan, thanks for training up that guy. We're going to take him and pop him over here. He's going to be his own salesperson. Hey, go and find yourself another sales associate. And I'm back at square one. The, I've just trained this young guy or girl to be a fantastic salesperson that's now working for the agency. They're going to go get their own listings and sales. What do I get out of it? They're not cutting, it in, cutting me in with it. They're just telling me to go start off and do it myself. And I had to go out and find my own sales associate again. So I had to just repeat this process. And it used to bug the hell out of me. And I realized after I did this with about three different people, I was like, this is, this is stupid. Why am I doing this and not like getting anything out of this. I'm just, I'm building their team. I could build my own team, right? So you go start your own business. You can bring these young sales associates through that work for you. They'll be, you, you make them great. You've got to be a great leader, all right? You've got to want the best for them. And then they become great at what they do. They go out on their own. And now they're salespeople on your team. And I tell you what, if you be a great leader, if you, if you give them the best opportunity that they think that they're going to have out there in the marketplace, those young sales associates will be your most loyal team members for the rest of your life.
All right. Some of, some of my sales associates still are still with me after so long, eight years the, my, uh, in the business and, you know, making great waves for themselves now, you know, building teams. And I'm so proud of them. And you can be that person who's so proud of a team that you build and have your own salespeople out there working for your business, helping build your brand and you're doing it together. And they're proud to be on your team. Right. Um, so that's another thing. That's a huge one. All right. Let's not let's not flick past that like that's nothing. That's massive. All right. The other thing is, is you can poach other agents, right? I don't really like the word poach, but you can you can get in front of other salespeople and show them what you're doing and provide them with an opportunity that they can't get somewhere else. Okay, there's a lot of unsatisfied salespeople out there that are working for a business that isn't doing much for them. And they actually, geez, they're just waiting for someone to knock on the door and pull them out of there and give them a better opportunity. You can do that. You can give other salespeople a better opportunity than they're currently getting and pull a really successful sales agent that's already done the years of grind and hard work to build up a reputation and get them to come and join your team. And let me tell you, if, if you can do that, that's instant income into your business, right? It's it's immediate because there's no training this person to get good. They're already good and you, you're just going to help them get better, all right? So that's massive. And then if you do that, your business just grows exponentially because you're getting double the amount of sales and marketing and everything. You've got another awesome person on your team and it's like high fives every day and you're loving it and it's awesome. It was one of the best things about growing my own business is getting some amazing talent in the marketplace to come and join my team. And a lot of those people are still with me today. I'm very proud to have them on my team. The other thing is you can do is you can build a rent roll, okay, which is actually the real value of a sales business. Well, a rent, no, sorry, a real estate business. All right. If you just have a sales business, it's not really worth much. If you ever want to hang up the boots when you're 60 years old and say, oh, I'm out, I'm going to sell this thing. If you've just got a sales team, it's worth nothing. All right. Because those salespeople can leave and go, go join someone else tomorrow. doesn't matter. All right. But rentals, they're sticky. They stay in the business. That's worth something. The bank gives it a value. Let me tell you something. You know, the easiest way to become a millionaire, sign up 200 rentals and you can do that in we did it in two years, all right? We signed up 230 rentals in two years. That's worth, these days, over a million dollars. That's crazy. You can't do that if you're on a, in a business on a, on just so as a salesperson. You know what you do? You go out there, you sell a property to an investor, and you flick it to the business, and the business probably gives you a week's rent or half a week's rent, right? If you start your own, you could own that rental. You could run it. You get regular income from the rental business, and then that has a value to it as well. So you build up... 500 of them, that's worth two and a half million. You can then borrow against that. You could borrow against that. The bank will give you $2 million. Go buy yourself a commercial premises. This is how you build, build wealth, people. All right? And you can do it. Trust me. It's not, I mean, look, I'm not going to say it's not hard, but you can do it. It's just a mindset. Most people are just scared to make the, make the change. Okay? Um, another thing you can do, right, is if you own your own business, you can, you can then eventually... Uh, you can lead yourself into other income streams, okay? If you've got a successful business, of course, that's your primary focus. But taking it back to my business, I had a real estate agency, Plum Property, for, uh, for about six years. You know, that was my main focus. It still is a big focus for me today. But I was able to then say, well, look, if this business is at a certain point, I would like to now add on another business, which is our subsidiary business, Plum Partners, where we help agents to... Uh, create, run and grow their own business, right? So that's another business that I now have, which has its own income. It's its own proprietary. And one day, you know, ho hopefully if uh, plans work out, that'll be worth something amazing at well. And I know it will because I'm go I've got the mindset that I'm just going to get it there, right? I know what I need to do. I know the effort that I need to put into and I've got, the, I've got a world-class team, all right? And I've worked on making a world-class team to make that happen. So there we go, guys. I've listed most of the pros and most of the cons for running your own real estate business. So now the decision is for you, what are you gonna do in the future? Are you gonna stay comfortable? If you're in a great place right now with your agency, they're amazing, you'd love it, then fantastic. Maybe you're not gonna make a change, but if you're not, if you know deep down and you know in your gut if you're not happy, all right, what are you gonna do to change? What's the, it's all a mindset, guys. There, there is something better on the other side. They say the grass is always greener. Let me tell you what, 
the grass is greener sometimes, okay? I went over to another patch and I started eating way greener grass when my grass was brown, all right? So you gotta make a decision if you're gonna stay in the same spot or you're gonna shift your mindset, believe in yourself, take a risk and try something new because there are some great options out there for agents these days to make something more of themselves. The market isn't the same it was 10 years ago. Your mindset is everything. Let's go get it. Let's get keen, guys. Thank you for tuning into the Get Keen podcast. If today's episode inspired you, please show your support with a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And make sure you subscribe on your favorite platform too. Don't stop there. Join our community of forward thinkers by connecting with me on social media at Dan underscore Lee underscore Plum. I'm looking forward to exploring more strategies and insights with you on your journey to the top. Until next time, keep getting keen.